So let's get started here. Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legospi, and today we are going to work on features. We're going to continue the discussion on how to get more accurate features. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, talk about a few ideas in construction, constructing features in a very elegant way, and then we'll do some demonstrations. And if you like this video, or if you like, uh, maybe you just found me on YouTube, or maybe you have my life drawing book, or found me a new Master's Academy, and you want to learn more from me, and you want to access more free live classes like this, or other head drawing and portrait drawing resources, you can go to www.drawwithchris.com. There you can sign up for my free insider's email list, and you'll get access to more uh, resources, as well as uh, I'm currently having a drawing challenge, so that's going to be very exciting. You could draw every day and be a part of a community. So all you have to do is go to www.drawwithchris.com, and there you can enter your email, and you'll be good to go. And before we begin, comment below, where are you located? Where are you watching from and what time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand and it's Saturday morning for me. So thank you for joining me wherever you are. So today we're going to talk about features and accuracy. In the previous video, we talked about alignments, which are important. The next topic is going to be construction, basically how we, um, how we uh, evolve from a two-dimensional idea to a one-dimensional idea, because basically the, um, the previous uh, lesson, we talked about alignments. Right, remember that? Now we're going to construct or use the alignments and evolve into three-dimensional ideas. So that's what we're going to cover today. And it's really the same principles that matter. And that is we build... all at once. So I like to draw all three features together at once instead of just individual. That's very helpful. And then uh, we're going to use base forms, of course. Base forms, geoforms, we know what these are by now. <laughs> you know what they are. Simple construction forms, geometric forms. And um, for the face, we're going to use what I like to call the book, the box, the tennis ball, 
and the golf ball. Or grape, you can call it grape. Grape is a fruit. Book, box, tennis ball. So basically, box, 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 egg, cylinder. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> it's very simple. When we uh, take a look at this, um, take a look at our model here, idealized male. And they're usually very good for practice. Very clear features, easy to draw, ideal proportions. So remember rule of thirds. So I'm already starting to plot my original alignments. And notice I'm making sure I have the ear as well. Now, obviously we need to get the eyes in there. So once we have the eye line, and then we can see the brow line, and we follow our alignments to get them in the right place, what I'd like to do is turn the brow into a book. Or sunglasses. You see how I just cut in to the side like that? Very simple. You've probably seen this many, many times, but it kind of looks like an open book, you see, <laughs> with words inside. That's why I call it the book. <clears throat> and then we can go a couple different ways here. We can go down to the, the nose. We can drop in the grapes or the golf balls for the eyes, very simple. Make sure you can put one in between. That'll help you find the side of the nose. This little thing is the keystone. It's the part where your brow bone transitions into your <clears throat> nasal bone. And then the tennis ball for the mouth. Now this model is not quite clear. But typically where you have your mouth line, which is halfway between the nose and the chin, you draw a tennis ball that fits neatly around the half, the half mark. Typically this goes above the, the nostrils. And what that does is it reminds you that the mouth is, is curved and that it comes forward. So typically we... Um, If you're new, you forget that the mouth <coughs> has volume. Your teeth actually come forward. So that's very important to show that. And then when you're ready to um, when so that we have the construction here, and then when you're ready to refine your construction, You see you have a nice a nice base to work with. Now I'm also going a little bit back to shape, but uh, we're not going to talk too much about drawing specific features, more about constructing the whole unit. So you see, it's all one unit, all together, including the ear. We'll talk about the importance of the ear another day. And then 
I can keep refining from here. So that is pretty much the construction model we're going to use. <clears throat> Let's take a look at some examples here. Oh, sorry, going back quickly to this example, remember how I said there was a tennis ball? You can see on this model how, how round his mouth feels. You see that? So on, on this particular face, it's much more clear. <clears throat> So I'll just go through some examples here and some different positions. And then um, we'll go through the process together. And a lot of my construction comes from uh, studying the various models that many of us are familiar with, the Loomis model, Bern Hogarth, all of these uh, classic books. So really nothing, um, nothing, uh, if you've been drawing a while, nothing that you're not familiar with already. But well, what I hope is, um, is maybe f um, you'll learn some subtle refinements, some subtle refinements and some subtle ideas. <clears throat> And if you are new to drawing, well, welcome. Then uh, congratulations, you got access to the best information in the world. And I can say that because I didn't invent any of it. <laughs> I just refined it and put my own thesis on it. So you see already, I have a nice feature set. It's still kind of 2D. So what I'm going to do is refine, refine, refine at this stage. So this is the stage to refine. And that's why you don't want to commit to detail at, uh, too early, of course. We all know that. Now I'm looking at her shape as well, making sure the shape reads or is characteristic of the model. And then uh, my alignments, double checking my alignments here, double checking my proportional guesses. You know, at first when you do proportion, you typically have to guess. So already I can feel a good likeness. Got a little bit of detail in the eyes, obviously. The nose is quite hidden in this pose, front view. The lips are very easy. The lips I draw like a boxy trapezoid, very easy. And I never really go outside of this. <clears throat> and then if I want to refine them, I just add a split. And again, this is a common model. I first learned that through uh, studying Loomis, uh, excuse me, uh, Riley, uh, which is related to, to Loomis.
So you see, um, most of the work is done by refinement, at least uh, where, where I'm at <laughs> in my drawing. Now, you may have to search and do a lot more sketching. Obviously, I was able to find my measurements quite quickly. And, you know, I, um, I picked this model, this reference, because she has very unique features, which are typically easy, easier to draw than standard, uh, a more idealized face. <clears throat> so for practice, it's good to find people with interesting features and faces, obviously. The more interesting and the more easier it is for you to recognize, the more, the more faster your decisions can be made. Now I'm really adding detail here. I'm trying to add the uh, the lower lid, but it's not necessary. It's still basically uh, the two grapes, the box, the box for the ear, uh, the brow, the book, the box for the nose. You can see the top plane right here for the nose, and then the cylinder or tennis ball for the mouth. Okay, let's look at another example here. Two D still, two D, two D. And notice that I spent a lot of time refining the shape of her face. This already can make or break the likeness. And if I get, if I get this right, or if I get a good shape, a good 2D shape in the beginning, then my 3D will, will, will take less work. So right now, because I spent a little extra time to refine this shape, my 3D, or my construction, has a chance to be more characteristic, to look more like the person. So already I'm, uh, I'm thinking ahead, even though I'm in the 2D stage. So we got the book for the brow, the measurements, the alignments, the ear connection. using her eyebrow as a gauge here, following the gesture of the keystone, corner of the eyebrow hair, using it as a gauge, just as an ge initial guess. So now I have my book here. I'm gonna drop in some eyes, just uh, some golf balls or grapes, and then you can test yourself check yourself by putting one in between, so mine looks okay. Box for the nose. Tennis ball for the mouth. Her mouth doesn't 
doesn't pop out too much. But we, we can exaggerate that to make her lips feel more fuller. It's not a bad idea when you're drawing uh, uh, females or attractive models or actresses and things. I have to do that for my job. I have to make them uh, prettier, of course. We call it glamorizing in the movie poster biz. So I've got to refine my contour because really the hard work is done. The hard work is done. What I'm doing now is refining the contour to make the features look good. See the features, you see, I build them all three at the same level. I don't go too far with one. They all work well together. They all have correct alignments. Now I got to make the pretty much the uh, the uh, the shape, the outer shape, the contour fit more with the features. So I'm basically moving some of some of the uh, these these lines, these uh, measurements. I'm moving them from my original. <laughs> but but that's okay. You can you can do that at this stage. That's what this stage is for. And just giving her some skull. You know, just I'm not going to draw her hair, but giving her some skull will um, make the, make the uh, size of the features look more correct, more accurate. So that's a big part of accuracy too, is relative to the rest of the face. But as long as these three work together, and they do, they notice there's no detail here, but they clearly look good together. They make sense, they're naturalistic, they kind of look like the model. So we're in good shape. Now we have a lot of confidence to move forward and add detail. And notice I draw, I always start my eye construction as spheres. That way I don't um, end up drawing almonds. That's a typical mistake <laughs> when you're new is you focus on the opening of the eye instead of the eye form itself. And the form we all know is a ball, is a big egg basically, or um, a grape or a golf ball. And that is pretty much it right there. And I think this is a good stopping point here. Her neck's a little fat. But as you can see, we just keep developing, we can keep going, we can keep refining, we can add tone now. But you see all of the stuff that we initially talked about is there. We have the book for the eyes. We have the the, the egg inside the eye. We have the, the box of the nose. We have the um, tennis ball. And then inside the tennis ball, we have that very elegant and simple mouth construction. So it's basically um, boxes and eggs, and then you twist and pull and refine. So nothing, nothing too shocking here, nothing too... Um, uh, you know, this, this has been passed down for hundreds of years now, and um, it's not so much that um, we all can draw this, but can we draw them together? Can we make them look good together? So that's really the, uh, the core of my philosophy when I draw features, is we kind of want them all to work well together first. So we need to align them and place them correctly first, which we did. And then we use simple geometry 
to make them into more three-dimensional ideas. And because we use simple geometry, it's easy for us to correct our mistakes, to refine, refine, refine. That's really the name of the game. Refine, refine, refine until it looks right. <laughs> Adjust the size, the width, the length, the placement, the location. And when you, once your eye is trained, you'll be able to do that more quickly, more accurately, and so on and so forth. So that's a good stopping point here. I want to thank you for watching. And um, if you like this video and if you like my work and you want to learn more from me, you can go to www.drawwithchris.com and there you can join my free Insiders Club email list. You can get access to more free live classes like this as well as downloads and other resource, resources for portrait drawing and figure drawing as well. And you can join my drawing challenge which is going on right now. You can be inspired to draw every day and join a community of like-minded artists. So go to www.drawwithchris.com and there you can enter email and you'll be good to go. So until next time, get out there, keep drawing, build up your mileage, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.